Hey guys, welcome back to Coding in Crypto. And today we're kicking off the Rust Intermediate tutorial. Now, just like a quick note, I'm assuming if you're in this tutorial, if you made it to this playlist, that you have some experience with Rust or you've been doing some studying or maybe you even caught my beginner tutorial. But I wanted to mention that if you did watch that beginner tutorial, I'm gonna move a little bit faster in this one. You know, in that previous tutorial, I made sure I covered everything and I went real slow. But here, I'm gonna kind of barf out some code and we're gonna talk about everything that's going on and then I'll give you guys an opportunity to pause the screen and catch up to what's on screen. And as always, the link to my GitHub is in the description, so if you ever need to reference the code, it's always gonna be there. Um, but without further ado, let's kick this thing off. Today, we're gonna to start by showing you guys how to containerize your applications in Rust. So we're gonna use what's called Docker. If you've never used Docker before, you can probably skip this video for now and come back to it once you kind of need to know how to do this. But this is going to be very important anytime you containerize your app and you want to ship it somewhere. So if you want to know what Docker is, there's some great videos online. Go check them out. Go do some research. It's a super powerful tool. But here we're just going to dive right in. So we're going to do new project. We're going to call it Rust and Docker. And I'm actually going to be using my WSL terminal for most of this. So I'm not going to really worry about it in here. So now that we've created this project here, you guys know what this is going to generate. I'm just going to say hello world from Docker. And to make a Docker file for a Rust application, you want to put it, I guess you could put it wherever you want, but I prefer to put it in the crate file itself, like in the folder for the crate. So Rust and Docker. And we're going to create a Docker file. And if you want, you can check out Rust's official image on Docker Hub right here. I would just search Rust Docker Hub and you'll find this particular image here. And this is just a Linux image with Rust toolkits in it. So like cargo and all that jazz. And you can use it to build your app. And there's a couple examples on here and, and some good information here. But we're going to cover the gist of it here. So I'm going to just type this out. And then we're going to talk about everything that's going on in here. So for starters, I'm obviously going to just use that Rust image. We're going to create a new cargo crate, just like we did in our terminal here for VS Code. I'll name it the same thing. We're going to set the work directory equal to that particular binary that we just created. And then we're going to copy in cargo.toml and of course source and the last thing we're going to do is we're going to run cargo build and we'll do a release build which is going to put it into a release folder in the target folder and it's also going to kind of omit some of that unnecessary junk that can get spit out to the output now just as a side note here this is enough to build an image here that is going to actually create and then deploy your Rust application. Um, technically, it needs to look something like this. But this right here is enough to do it. But the thing about this setup is we're actually shipping the whole Rust image with our app. And that means we're going to be shipping like cargo and all of the toolkits that come with Rust. And you don't really want to do that with Docker. With Docker, you really just want to only ship what you need. So with Cargo, all you need Cargo for is to build the application and to install all the dependencies and to manage all the different aspects of your app. Once that's done and it's been compiled into an executable binary, then you don't need Cargo and you don't need any of the other junk that comes along with it. So. If you were to ship with cargo, like your image is going to be super heavy. It's going to be big. And you can eliminate most of that by actually doing what's called a multi-stage Docker build. And that means we execute all this build stuff up here. And that's why I named this builder, because this is the build stage. And then we copy what we need from the build stage into a new image. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's start with CentOS as an example, just as a Linux distro that we want to use. And here's the magic part right here. We're going to copy from the builder 
And we're actually going to copy this whole thing here. And we're going to put it into this Rust and Docker executable here. And then our command becomes just that. So now this part here is just the image that we're going to ship. So all it has is our CentOS distro and then our application. It doesn't have cargo. It doesn't have anything else. And now we're going to just jump into WSL and use Docker to see what's going on here. So as you can see, well, first of all, my stuff is cached, so that's going to move a lot faster on my machine. This may take a while at first, but once Docker kind of caches this stuff out, it can be pretty quick. But either way, you can see that we stepped through each of those steps and we successfully built our Docker image. So now let's just run it. Hello world from Docker. Nice. So you can see that that worked and this is all we're running right here. So that's super cool. Now, what about other like operating systems here? What if we don't want to use CentOS? What if we want to use Alpine? Well, to start, I'm going to just create a new file here and I'm going to call it Docker CentOS Docker file. And I'm just going to copy this stuff in there. Save it just so we have a record of it. And now if we go back to our original Docker file and I switch this over to Alpine, seems like it's going to work, right? No problem. But actually what's going to happen is that Rust image isn't going to be compatible with Alpine and we'll talk about it. So it builds no problem. But when you go to run it, you get this error. And that's because this Rust image is compatible with a lot of Linux distros, but Alpine is not one of them. So what you actually need to do is use the specific Rust Alpine tag. And that's going to have an Alpine file system when it builds the application so that when you put it onto an Alpine image, everything is compatible. So let's try that again. And as you can see, it's going to pull in that image because I don't have it on my computer yet. And I'm just going to fast forward here. Okay, so that successfully built. And now we're just going to run it. And there we go. Now we get our output. So that's how you make it compatible. I, th I don't know how many operating systems or Linux distros are compatible with the basic Rust image. You might have to do a little research on Docker Hub, but this is definitely how you do it with Alpine. So we're going to go ahead and create a new file and just call it Docker Alpine Docker file. And again, I'm going to copy this in there for an example. And now the last thing we're going to cover is we did CentOS, we did Alpine. Let's go ahead and do Debian. And a pretty popular Debian is the Buster Slim. And so just to just as like a side note, this will work with just the Rust 1.58 image. But you can also use the Buster Slim tag as well. So as you can see, that builds no problem. And hello world from Docker, nice. But just for consistency's sake, you can also do Rust Slim Buster, and that'll guarantee you that they're both using the same OS. So built again, run again, and we get our output. Awesome. And that is really it. I'm gonna toss this in a new file again, but that is how you create Rust Docker files and how you can create Docker containers for Rust. So this will come up later because we're gonna build some example apps later and we're gonna do some stuff. And you're gonna see the capabilities of Docker and to be able to ship this stuff into like cloud or Kubernetes or Kubernetes on cloud, like what have you. And um, that'll be a very integral piece. So a good way to kick this tutorial off. Thanks for watching.